Right, Toasty, first and foremost, back with the Desert Lads for pre-season. Do you want to just talk me through what, you, what you've been up to? Uh, we're back in for two weeks of pre-season, so double sessions um, before in September term time starts and it's lessons and back into a full-time schedule. So just, um, they've obviously enjoyed their summer holidays as kids, which we encourage them to do. Um, they've all been placed within local adult teams, which is going great. Um, I know they're back in full-time with us and we're obviously prepping for the new year and our FA Youth Cup game, which is on the same week as the Biggles Road game. Do you want to give me a bit of detail about what you do and what your role is there and, and perhaps how the pathway from sort of PBS to Desert to the first team, sort of the um, infrastructure of the club, how that all works, really? Yeah, so PB um, has been going since 2008 um, and it's a, it's a, it's a charitable organisation which basically um, allows people from now under 11 to under 16 to probably bridge the gap between grassroots and um, academy football. Um, and it also acts as probably a safety net for people that come out of academies as well. Train twice a week up at Nefford in Deerham. Um, they all go to different schools, all play for their local clubs. We work really hard to work with local clubs. I think it's really, really important so we don't encroach on Sunday football in any way. Back county football, um, so we all try and work together. Um, and then when they hit 16, um, come to Desa, and people obviously go to other places as well, where they then do full-time education, equivalent of three A-levels, which they have the pleasure of myself, Lee, James and Luke all teaching them as well as coaching them and I'm sure they are all sick to death for, for the time they get to 18. So on to the first thing now then, a big week for Deerham and, and yourself personally in terms of from a competitive point of view. How has your week been? Um, <laughs> it's been a bit discombobulated um, because there's so much going on um, and so many things to change. Um, but we started on a, on a high on Saturday, Ross Billum's birthday. A little bit disappointed he didn't bring a Victoria sponge in for the lads, but he'd done a great job and um, brought in some cakes to the boys. Um, but I think all in all, with the start of Desa coming back, and you know we had two league games um, off the back, you know Saturday, Tuesday, and then we had FA Cup Saturday to to just be undefeated. I think in this process, pick up two wins in the FA Cup, and then two draws in the league. One which was a you know a disappointing home draw, but given the circumstance of a hot day, new league. I think we would, probably everyone would have took it. Um, and then um, and you needed the flannels out that day for the heat. Um, but I think uh, then going away, being 2 0 down, um, down butthole lane, and uh, coming out alive was, was good character as well. Yeah, so you mentioned the, the Hinkley game, a decent point for the club. And as you said, the circumstances sort of make it acceptable, I think, in, in, in those conditions. Talk to me about Shep Shed then and, and, and Butthole Lane and, and everything that went on there because it was a bit of a... Well, I, you know, I wasn't there myself, but the game from the description seemed a bit of a rocky start. And then you found your feet, late equaliser, again, from behind, showing great character. Is that something that you're, you're really proud of in terms of your team? And, when, they and whether put, when they put hashtag up the butthole, they ain't wrong, by yeah. the way. Um, no, it's, it's an ex it's experience. Um, it is an experience. And, you know, and I actually give them a lot of credit. Like, there's so much prestige with their club. I think Martin O'Neill used to manage them. They're one of the longest clubs going. So actually, it's a bit sad, really. It's a bit of an honour to, to be at a ground where people like that have been. Um, it's tough. Weather weren't great. Uh, a bit of a slope on the pitch. Um, they are. They play to their strengths. They're big, they're strong. They're compact. The pitch is quite narrow, but long. Um, and, and we had the pleasure of defending the slope to start with. And to be quite truthful, we couldn't get out. Um, they literally squeezed the life out of us. Um, and then I just felt that we tactically adapted at half time and then we're coming down the slope the other side. And I think our fitness and quality came out maybe a bit later in the game, but I think we got what we deserved in the end. Before we get on to the Felix Stoke game, because I think that's kind of a different conversation in terms of the mentality and, and the way you approached the game and the way you managed it, because you know, quite clearly a 2-0 win is different to coming back from behind twice. Talk to me about how you've sort of invoked that reaction to going a goal down. Is it, as you said, fitness, mentality? What have you done behind the scenes to implement that into what is still a very new sort of group of lads who maybe aren't totally familiar with each other personally yet? But how are you sort of implementing that elite mentality? I think if you look at the nature of us going behind in all the games, it had nothing to do with open play. They were just swi like little switches off from set pieces. So we were, we were actually coming in at half time going, do you know what, we've, we've actually defended quite well in general play, but this has happened. So when we go back to the pre-season thing, not having one, 
we just iron them out. So all we're really doing is we're ironing out the things that should have been ironed out in pre-season and then doing it now. Um, and then I must give credit to the players there. They're really buying in really, really quickly and learning really, really quickly. And um, they're giving this club everything, I think, at the minute. You can see that from how much they run. Um, and that was actually the flip flip uh, reversal at half time. We actually said, like, we have to not be the other side from the other night. So we actually talked about just, this is going to sound horrendously boring, we actually just talked about sitting there, letting them come on to us and just trying to rip them on the break. And if it is a boring second half, unfortunately, sorry fans, but 2-0, like, thanks for coming, really. So and it was a bit, and must give credit to Felix, though, because I think their attitude, um, they didn't didn't give up and they they obviously got a bit of a roast in at half-time and they come come at us, which you'd expect anyone to at 2-0 down. And I just think we managed the game really, really well. Yeah, so let, let's go into the first half of the Felix Day game into a bit more detail. I personally don't think, from what I've seen from your team so far, it was too different other than sort of the taking your chances element. Felix Day are a team who I think they finished fifth last season um, in our former league, the Ismian North, um, and they lost in the playoff final to Canvey. Canvey, a team who we know are very, very good. So going into the game, it was always going to be a really tough test. You know, this new league, it's a lot of unknowns and... I think sort of going into those games, you can be quite naive, can't you? Whereas this game, we kind of knew what we were playing against in terms of the, the continuity of that team. A lot of that squad looks similar. Going into that game, did that affect your approach? Because if it did, can it affect your approach every week like that? Because that first half was just phenomenal, wasn't it? Uh, no, I, I, this is going to sound a bit but, like terrible. No, I don't really care who we're playing. Like, you could put anyone in front of me, I don't really care about them. Like, you want to win, don't you? So um, we, we just try to win. Um, but again, again, it goes back to learning. Like, what we're doing better is not like as a team. We're knowing when to drop. We're knowing when to like press now, and we're knowing when to maybe slow the game down a little bit more. Um, and I, th I don't feel like the things that have got to get better are understanding each other's runs, um, understanding what the strengths of each other are, and taking your chances. Because I, th I think it would not be unfair to say we should have been four 0 up at half time and had a cigar on, really. But um, yeah, they're all little teething issues that are going to happen. Yeah, tell me where we're at with the project so far then, because you mentioned the second half, so we'll leave that alone for now. In terms of this, this project we spoke about when you were appointed and how everything wasn't going to always be glamorous, so far we haven't had to see the ugly side. We know at some point we might, but in terms of the project, the squad, where are we at? Are you happy with where we're at? Because we've got a squad of 20, 21 players and you've got some proper ballers in there as well. So are you quite happy with the progress so far or is it a case of you're still looking elsewhere to bring players in, let players go? Where are we at? It's all right saying that you've got to look elsewhere, but if they're not anywhere to look at, then you, you can't, you're going to have to just be patient, aren't you? you know? and, um, and, all, and, and I don't mean that in disrespect to the area, but there's a lot of clubs now at that level. Deerham used to be the only team at this level, so they could have the cream of the crop, really. And now we're not, and everyone's spread out everywhere. So um, we're going to have to work with people and make people better. We're going to have to promote from within our our academy at the right time. It's all about timing. Because I think people don't appreciate they're now starting their pre-season, they're now starting their FA Youth Cup campaign. And it's not fair to throw them in, in you know, and uh, and put all, all the pressure on them. We've still got to get our first league win somewhere. Yes, we're undefeated, but we need to get points on the board and settle ourselves into this league. What I've noticed is, is, is the league that we're in now um, is, from what I've seen in the first couple of games, um, a lot more physically brutal. As in, you know, you know, I think as well as the Macron warm-up tops that get su supplied, they probably should, should have put crash helmets in there with a, with a Macron badge on the front. So we've got to learn how to pick up first and second balls a lot better and be better from set plays, basics, before we start talking about how we look on the ball. So uh, it's no, no different to building a house, do all the boring stuff first, build up, and then you, you put all the nice stuff on at the end. So I think if we'd have gone the other way with it and gone, look how they play out from the back, lovely. Uh, we've just got relegated because we had nothing about us. So I, th I think we've got to show a bit of heart and fight first before anything else. And then um, it, it will take time. We, we, we're not in a position to go anywhere, this club at the minute. We, we need to build a club, pitch, training facilities, more fans in the, in the door, building needs renovating. We need to do all the basics um, because the club ultimately have to be ready to go up before the team. Um, and, and this team, I think the average on, you know, you're looking at 23, 24. Teams that normally are really, really successful, like 26, 27. So this team stays together, which, again, is another thing that we've got to do, keep them together. Um, 
you'll see the obviously the benefits of it in the future. Yeah, so it's 3.30 p.m. Monday morning, Monday afternoon, sorry, not Monday morning. We play Stamford tomorrow at home. Stamford, who I believe are quite high up in the table, have started the season quite well. Give me your thoughts on that game. Another tough task. Again, it's, I find it difficult to ask you about games that lie ahead because we don't know too much about the league, do we? But in terms of the approach, talk to me a little bit about that. Is it just a case of what you've said before or is there something different up your sleeve? Uh, it's simple for me. Uh, make the, everyone who watches the game Tuesday night go, that was a great game. Um, and make Stanford get on their bus going, they're no pushover. And then if we do all of our jobs properly, we might win. Or we've got a good chance of winning. Um, I don't care about budgets and about, about where people are at. It's a game of football. It's 11 v 11. Um, it's a load of old Because if you go into a game with all that mentality, you're on the back foot before you start. So they've got to get on. A, on a, they've got to travel here um, on, a, on a horrible night. Um, and we've got to make it horrible for them. Yeah. Talk to me then finally about the FA Cup. We've been drawn today um, at home to Biggleswade on the 3rd of September. Success last time out as, um, against Felix Doe's, as we talked about. The FA Cup, the significance of it to you. You know, you've had good experiences in the FA Youth Cup, haven't you? Yeah. But the FA Cup itself, talk to me about the significance to you as, as a coach, as a manager, and, and maybe to the club and the implications of having a little bit of success by our standards in, in the competition. To me, it's no different. This is going to sound stupid. It's no different to the FA Youth Cup. It's the same principles and approach for me. We've, we've been really, really fortunate. Um, to have some brilliant FA Youth Cup nights here. And when we've played higher opponents, we've, I, don't, I think the only time we've ever lost is in extra time. We've had five occasions, two big wins and three extra time, one goal defeats, which shows that we're competitive in big matches at Aldous Park. Aldous Park, Aldous Park can be a, a fortress um, up here. And all cup competitions are, for me, is it's memories for the fans, it's memories for the players, and it produces the club money. So when we're talking about developing developing the club. The reality is, is unless you've got a chairman that buys you two wingers and whoever you want, you have got to generate that income yourself. So we are, we as a group are going to have to try and generate as much for the club um, as, what, as we can, but it's not a marker for me of our season. It's, it's just something you look back at the presentation night and you go, what a run that was. But the league is the, the bread and butter for me that I'm focusing on.